is Ed McCoy. I'm with Hawkins Outfitters, and uh, I'm going to tie one of my favorite little early season dry fly spinners. It's a rusty spinner, so this is kind of my version off a basic template. Um, I like to tie this fly from size 16 up to 12. Uh, it's pretty simple, pretty elegant. A lot of our water is flat, so this fly was designed more for a spring creek style. It'll still float and chop, but I do uh, really well with it in flat water. So here we go. Uh, we're going to start, we're going to do this fly on a size 14 standard dry fly hook. I'm using a Tiamco 100. Uh, using 8 dot thre thread and rusty brown color. And uh, we'll get started here with this. So basically just put your thread on. We're going to bring it back all the way almost to the bend. So I'll use this fly a lot for... Uh, during the Hendrickson hatch, which is one of our first bigger mayflies that we experience here in Michigan. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually do a female version. So we're going to add a little dubbing ball of yellow dubbing. Um, and here I'm using the hairline yellow dub. And with this will serve two purposes. One, it will give me a nice clean egg sac and also a ball to prop my tail fibers up against to make them splay out better. If you get too much you can just pluck it off. So once we get that done we're going to stop the thread right in front of that. I'm just using some uh, white mayfly tails. Color choice is completely up to you. Uh, I like the white because it will contrast better on this dark body. And I'm just looking for four of these. I'm going to display two on each side. So once you get those fibers selected, kind of get the tips pointed back to the rear of the hook and you want to tie them in about the length, maybe slightly longer than the shank hook length. We're going to tie them in right on top, a couple loose wraps, make sure everything stays on top and if you take your thumbnail you can kind of roll and split these fibers to the sides And then we're just going to wrap back against that little ball of dubbing that we tied in. And these will lock themselves right into place here. Like so. And then we'll just wrap forward. Make sure this is locked in. Just short of the eye, we can trim off the excess. By doing that, that'll also help keep consistency in the width of your body. Okay, so now we want to bring our thread back to the rear. And we're going to use a bayet to do the body of the spinner. So what I'm using is just a rusty brown turkey bayet. We're going to tie this in by the tip. Now there should be two sides. There'll be a curved side and then a side that has what feel like a ridge in your fingers. You want the ridge facing up. So when you wrap it, it'll give it a segmented look. We're going to tie that in right by the tip. And then one other thing I do when I do a buy-it body is they're kind of fragile. Uh, trout have sharp teeth obviously so we're gonna do a dubbing loop and then we're gonna bring our thread forward just short of the eye and I'm gonna get in there with my scissors and cut that thread and leave it out to the back here now what I'm gonna use this for is a rib it'll help add some durability to this 
So now if you have a rotary vise, you know, you can basically take your vise, but make sure you put a half hitch. thread so it doesn't unwind on you. Now you want to get sure make sure that by it kind of slightly over wraps itself and you'll start to see that rib effect that we were looking for. We're going to wrap it right up just short of the eye. Tie it off. Trim out the excess here. So the next step is we want to get our thread just about to where we're going to tie in our wing. And then we're going to take this other piece of thread that we had for a rib and simply just wrap it coming forward through the bayet. Tie that off. That's that. So now, <clears throat> the way I like to do this fly is actually parachute style. So we're going to tie in a post now. And I'm just, color is up to you. I like fluorescent yellow. Typically I'm fishing this fly in the evening. So that's low light conditions. Uh, my eye picks up this color better than most. Orange would be another good color to choose from. Um, white's not bad, but sometimes white will disappear in the bubble lines. Makes it harder to pick up. So I'm going to use chartreuse. I'm just using Parapost. It's a fluorescent yellow. Um, one strand, but I'll, I'll double it over to give me a little more thickness to the wing, which makes it a little more visible. We're just going to tie this right on top. cover up that material with our thread. Like so. <clears throat> so now what you'll want to do is kind of post this wing up. So I'm going to make several turns of thread behind it and around the base. Kind of get this material to stand up a little bit. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. So now we want to tie in our hackles which will make up our wing. Um, I'm using a whiting grizzly saddle. I like to use two feathers. I find that this makes it more durable. Um, and because I'm going to actually trim out the wing, it gives me a little bit more bulk to this hackle, which allows it to float a little bit better. So I'm just going to prep these two feathers, lay them right on top of one another. I'm strip out a little bit at the base. Like so. And we're going to tie that in right behind the wing. All right, so here's a little trick will help make this parachute go a little easier. So we're going to grab both feathers and the post and we're just going to wrap up this post creating a thread base to turn our hackles on. And once we get it mostly covered bring our feather or our thread back to the base 
and then a couple turns in front. This is where we're going to tie in our hackles when we're done. So now, what you can do is tease out the post, take your hackles and your strong hand, for me I'm right handed, and we're going to start wrapping right where the thread starts, putting slight tension, and each turn we're going to start to go down towards the base of this wing. Try and keep the feathers from splaying too far apart. And we're going to make approximately five to six turns going down. And then we'll tie it off right in front of the wing. Once you get your hackles secured, you can whip finish the fly. Trim off our thread. Make sure everything's in position here. Trim out our hackle. rid of any other loose fibers that may have been out of alignment. Now if you pull your wing up, I'm just using this as an indicator so it's truly not to create a silhouette for the fish to see. So we're going to cut that fairly short. Now you could leave this fly as is, it'll fish just fine, but we're going to actually make this look like a spent wing fly, so we're going to come in from the front, clip out a few of those hackles, and then in from the rear and do the same. you're left with is a nice spent wing, spent wing silhouette that'll fish very well blind or during a spinner fall.